untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Standard Games video. Today we're taking a look at a deck titled Teamer Twins, as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. It's a ramp deck capable of a combo finish, thanks to some of these doubling effects like Double Vision, the 5-man enchantment, saying whenever we cast our first instant or sorcery spell each turn, copy that spell and we may choose new targets for the copy, and we can achieve a similar result with Rowan, Scholar of Sparks. The 3-mana Planeswalker starts out at 2 loyalty and has a passive ability making our instants and sorceries cost one less, the plus one deals one damage to each opponent, and then the minus four ultimate, which we can reach pretty quickly, gives us an emblem saying whenever we cast an instant or sorcery spell, we may pay two mana, and if we do copy that spell and choose new targets for the copy, and then we also have the flexibility of playing Will, Scholar of Frost for 5 mana, which has the same passive ability, and we're mostly going to use for the minus 3 ability to draw 2 cards, and can also shrink opposing creatures into an O2 until our next turn with the plus 1. Then how do we plan to close out the game? Well, our main finisher is going to be Crackle with Power, the powerful burn spell that can potentially deal 10 damage straight to the opponent's face as well as to one of their creatures, and if we can double that with a double vision, we can just kill the opponent on the spot. And then another powerful way we have of ending the game is by taking a bunch of extra turns with Alrun's Epiphany, which also generates some bird tokens, which can help us close out the game as well. So let's take a look at the rest of the deck, starting out with our two drops, where we have some early interaction with Fire Prophecy, dealing 3 damage to target creature, and then we may put a card from our hand on the bottom of our library, and if we do draw a card, so it can help us smooth out our draws. We also have some ram spells that put additional lands in our hand, like Cultivate and Verdant Mastery, so sometimes we end up with more lands in hand than we need, so we can also get rid of those with Fire Prophecy to hopefully draw a more useful card. And then we also have the full playset of Into the Royal, and some cheap interaction to bounce an opposing non-land permanent. Can also kick it for an additional one and a blue, in which case we get to draw a card. So just great interaction that also draws cards, which is great in combination with our double vision. Then at 3 mana we've got some ramp with Cultivate, can search a land to put into play tapped and want to put in our hand. Then we've got our Rowan and Will, as well as two copies of Midnight Clock, which is an additional way to ramp, adding additional blue mana. And at the beginning of each upkeep, we put an hour counter on Midnight Clock, and when a 12th hour counter is put on Midnight Clock, we shuffle our hand and graveyard into our library, and then draw seven cards and exile Midnight Clock. And we can also speed up this process by paying two and a blue to put an extra counter on the Midnight Clock, so it makes for a great mana sink if we're just looking to replenish our hand. And then at 4 mana we've got 2 copies of Storm's Wrath, as our Sweeper of Choice dealing 4 damage to each creature and each Planeswalker. And then Verdant Master we can also cast for 4 mana, in which case we get to search for 4 basic lands. One of them we have to put into play tapped under the opponent's control, two of them are going to play tapped under our control, and the last land goes into our hand. And if we cast it for 6 mana instead, the opponent doesn't get any lands, we get to put 2 of them in play and 2 in our hand. And then moving up the curve we've got our full playset of Double Vision, as well as our 2 copies of Crackle with Power to close out the game, and then 4 copies of Genesis Ultimatum, which is another great card to ramp into, and especially nice to copy with our double vision. We get to look at the top 5 cards of our library, put any number of permanent cards from among them onto the battlefield, and the rest into our hand, and then we exile Genesis Ultimatum, so this can help us find double vision and put it in play, and it can also find our Planeswalker. Now do keep in mind, if we put our Planeswalker in play with Genesis Ultimatum, it's going to put the front side of a card into play, so it's going to be Rowan instead of Will, so if we don't want a Rowan to be in play, instead we can just decide to put it into our hands and then later cast Will, and the same goes for the Pathways. These will also come into play as the front side of the card. And then Genesis Ultimatum just helps us find more cards, and can potentially help us find Elrond's Epiphany, which is also great once we have a doubling effect in play, as we'll just get to take all the extra turns and eventually find a Crackle with power to close out the game. And then we also get to free roll Kahira, the Orphan Guard, as our companion, since we don't have any other creatures in the deck. And then a mana base consists of four of the Catria Triome, all 12 pathways in the Teamer Colors, and then we do want some basic lands to search up with our Cultivate and Verdant Mastery, which is why we don't have room for Fabled Passage. So we have two forests, three mountains, and four basic islands. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. All right, we're on the draw with a reasonable hand, got lots of interaction, and then mastery perfect for ramping into ultimatum. Facing double planes. So points towards a creature deck. Black-white. 
Archfiend's Vessel, that's fine. So maybe a Cleric Tribal deck. Could put Kahira in hand, but then we have to discard to hand size, so it doesn't seem productive. I'll take the one, and we'll keep up our Bounce spell. And there's a Skyclave Hierophant, which we're gonna sense packing here. Since I wanna ramp with Mastery, instead of being forced to cast the Storm's Wrath. And then, doesn't really matter what land we give our opponents. Alright, next turn we can cast our ultimatum. Which can maybe find double vision, and then we can play Epiphany with double vision in play. So we're not under a ton of pressure, which is where we want to be. And a Speaker of Heavens. That's fine. Right, double Fission and Quadruple Cultivate. That's pretty bizarre. Probably you can discard two of them. Well, at least we found our Double Fission, which is what we were hoping for. Opponent up to 27, so they can make their Angel with Speaker. Probably gonna have to clear the boards with Storm's Wrath first. Sadly, Conquer's Death exiles or double vision. That's a setback. Let's uh, clear the board. And then we can bounce the Demon. The Conqueror's Death Tax is also going to be very effective here and slowing us down. Tabarak's an easy target for Prophecy. And another Genesis Ultimatum, which we have to spend 9 mana on. Um, might be better off handling the board first. Make sure we don't get run over. So I can cultivate and prophecy. Uh, maybe cultivate first to thin out the deck. And then prophecy Tabarox. And we'll get rid of Cultivates. Could have waited until the opponent's turn to kill Tabarox as well to still have the second Prophecy up. Opponent gets back Tabarox with a counter, still dies to Prophecy. Alright, there's our Crackle with power, so if Ultimatum finds another double vision then Crackle could set up lethal for now. Probably lead with ultimatum and then prophecy afterwards. And there's our double vision. Now we could also epiphany. Yeah, I guess that's better. It's not the first spell we've cast, so it didn't trigger off double vision, but I think we have enough to kill the opponent here with our Crackle of Power. So this is 15, so X equals 4. And then doubled by the double vision. 
so that's 40 damage. Village rights to draw two, that's fine. And there we go, we got there in the end, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine hand. Got some ramp into double vision and then epiphany to hopefully take two extra turns. Opponent's green-white with a Lotus Cobra. Can foretell. Fable Passage can make two mana with Cobra in play. And a Skid Swarm. Alright, that's fine. We do have Storm's Wrath in the deck to clean that up eventually. We'll cultivate. And then next turn drop Vision, and then for 6 mana we can already Epiphany and chain those together. Not sure yet if our opponent's playing a Mutate variant, which might have enchantment removal in the form of a Gem Racer. So that's potentially a reason to play differently. Opponent potentially has 7 mana here with a second Fabled Passage. And it's going to be Hardcast Symbiosis, which finds the Ancient Green Warden, which does synergize quite nicely with all the landfall creatures. Can probably still afford to double vision here, and then hope it doesn't get destroyed. And then next turn we can start taking extra turns. So Green Warden lets them replay Fable Passage out of the graveyard. Bunch more landfall triggers. Better points just can attack. We're at four. And our opponent passes. Okay, time to Epiphany. So two extra turns lined up. And then probably play a double vision here. Get to attack. And probably no real need to enter the royal. Might as well foretell then. Still have an extra turn. And now we get to take three more extra turns. And we should be able to get across the finish line with the birds. GG's. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a very nice opening hands, plenty of ramp into a Genesis Ultimatum, and that usually leads to good things. Well, let's see what our opponent is up to. Mardu Trium. So next turn we'll cultivate.
This will make the third blue. And the Throne of Death, Serpo and the Graveyard deck. Alright, I could put Kahira in hand, I could add a counter to Clock, or we could keep up Prophecy. I guess we'll put Kahira in hand. As we see Draneth Magistrate go to the graveyard. So if we draw a mountain or a forest, we can cast Ultimatum next turn. As we see a Colossal Plow. Alright, I'm intrigued. We get to Ultimatum here. And just finds two lands and some interaction. So not a devastating ultimatum that it could have been. But we get to keep a prophecy for the plow. Opponent doesn't crew it, so... Don't get to use our Prophecy. Could cycle into the Royal, could cast Epiphany. Kind of want to wait until we have a doubling effect in play before we Epiphany. So maybe just pass a turn and then can always decide to level up our Midnight Clock. I feel like casting Kahira is not going to accomplish much. Opponent is probably sitting on some removal. Still nothing. Well, I guess we'll cycle into the royal then. Another epiphany. Sure. I guess we can chain some of those together. Cultivates, fine. So I can cast Epiphany for seven. Opponent might kill some of our birds, I suppose. Yeah, I mean, I could just refresh my entire hands by going for the clock and then maybe hold the second epiphany for after we redraw our hands in case we pick up double vision or Rowan. And then do we cycle, try more play it? Probably cycle it now. Into the royal. I guess we'll play Kahira, sure. And pass it back. They can draw with their throne. See an elite spellbinder. So they've got creatures, but they haven't played any yet. I'm gonna try to steal Kahira. Let's just kill it in response. That way I get to use my Prophecy, and they don't get to sacrifice Kahira for their benefit. Ooh, Crackle. That could win us the game. Another Claim. Sure. Hang on to Into the Royal since it's a bit more versatile. Opponent gonna stomp my Author Bird. I could fire Prophecy again to fizzle the Bone Crusher, but we'll let that happen. Ok, 
get rid of Storm's Wrath and another Epiphany. All right. Well, we can foretell that, so we can still cast it after we draw a fresh hand with Clock. So do we bounce the plow here? How much can we crackle for? Not enough to kill the opponents. Yeah, we'll just take our draw step then. Another Midnight Clock. So let's kick into the Royal on the plow. And then foretell. Play another clock. And we'll pass. So we'll lose our crackle here. But hopefully we'll find a way to double our epiphanies and then two epiphanies safely in exile. Surely are gonna take over the game. There's our double vision. Alright. Showdown of the Skulls goes to the graveyard. That's fine. See a Croxa, Titan of Death's Hunger. Plenty of cards we can discard. Starting with a Cultivate. A replace Plow. So I guess Plow combos with Croxa is the idea. Might as well level up our clock. And it's time for double vision. Into Epiphany as step one. And then I can cultivate afterwards. Only the first spell gets doubled, so we don't want to cultivate first here. Although we probably don't have many basic lands left in the deck. Opponent stomps another bird, sure. Alright, thin out the deck. Take our first extra turn, and how about a double Genesis Ultimatum? Oh yes. Double double vision. So we can take up Rowan to work towards our emblem. Let's see how many you can and uh, next turn another Epiphany should close out the game for us. We have 22 cards remaining to discard to hand size. So we could plus. Attack. Oh, and take four extra turns. And our opponent concedes. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a reasonable ish hand. The double crackles a bit much. If we can cast mastery, our mana issues are solved and we can set up a powerful late game. But yeah, if we could change one crackle with a land, this hand would be much better. As is, we need to draw two lands in essentially three draw steps. So we're not a favorite, although Cultivate still helps. I'll try it. Alright, land is good. So one more land. Next turn we can put Kahira in hand at the very least. And a Merfolk Wind Robber, so there's a land, great. And they land Vala, Shield of Seagate, can protect their creatures, so this is a party deck. Alrighty, time for mastery. And then. I'm guessing the opponent's not playing green, so that's the least useful land we can give them. 
and then we want green and red. And then we need to double vision, get up to 8 mana for 20 damage with Crackle. And Limvala only protects creatures and not players. Skybonder, so they've got a bit of a flying theme. And a skydiver. Okay. So. Should be pretty straightforward. Play double vision. Play tapped triome. Still have that epiphany waiting in the wings as well, which we can cast next turn if we want to. And then Crackle with power will be lethal, so hopefully they don't mess with our vision. They could maybe bounce our double vision with a Brazen Borrower. Our opponent taps out for Dream Trawler, that's perfect. We're at 7. And let's see here, I could even play a Rowan into Epiphany. Just because. Doesn't matter. I don't even need my sword to win. Take two extra turns. In the meantime we can level up our Rowan. And Crackle doubled by double vision is already lethal. Lots of techniques from artists. But we might as well go bigger. Copy with double vision, although I guess we don't have any lands left. And no point in attacking into the life linking dream trawler. All right, we can make an emblem. I'll show you something impressive. And then X equals two. Doubled by double vision. No mana to copy it with Rowan, sadly. And since Crackle has two different targets, even if they fizzle one of them here with Linval or Dream Trawler, the 10 damage to the face still resolves. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a nice hand. Some cheap interaction. And then Rowan to maybe help us ramp towards Epiphany, or we could wait for Will. Turn one planes into Star Pupil. Could kill it with a prophecy. I think I'd still rather foretell. And then wait for a more impactful creature to kill here. Take one. And that's it. Alright. Do we wanna tap out for Ruin? Don't hate it. Could see a Skyclave Apparition exile it, perhaps. That's fine. Makes potent. Opponent is green-white, so maybe a plus one counter synergy deck. As we see the ooze. Right, cultivates. This is good training. So let's cultivate. One's blue and either more blue or second green. Let's go with second green. Because if we find Midnight Clock, that also makes more blue mana for us. Our 
art and combat aren't so different. And then we definitely want to prophesy the ooze now before they get a chance to untap. I don't think I get rid of anything since I'm happy with our hand. And keep up second prophecy over playing the forest. And then we want to get double vision down. Another ooze. Counter on itself. Don't have triple red, so I won't be able to double vision plus a double prophecy. Well, nice hit. But I might as well untap and see if we draw a mountain. Oh, there we go. Although if we play this as a red source, I won't have triple blue for ultimatum. It's probably still acceptable. <laughs> I've learned lots of techniques from artists. And then we have to be somewhat careful with the sequencing here, because the copy is going to resolve first. So I want to target Star Pupil and then Ooze with a copy. So that the Pupil doesn't put a counter on the Ooze to save it. And then at this point I probably get rid of the forests. And Cultivate... probably worth keeping. Alright, next one we get to Double Epiphany. Start taking up our Planeswalker some more. And we can even copy the Epiphany with our Emblem if we wait long enough, but... Yeah, I don't think we'll have the time. Mastery. So let's plus... Don't worry, this won't take long. And then I guess I we can cultivate you. into Epiphany. Although now we won't double the epiphany, so that was bad. Yeah, that was a mistake. Although we do have more mana to work with. So I can emblem, play will. More power, more punch. See what we pick up. Maybe a new Crackle? Alright, I guess we can close out the game next turn. And then I could mastery thanks to the discounts. And get one land, okay. Yeah, it definitely pays to have a lot of basics in this deck. And then next turn Crackle should be game over. So sequenced a bit awkwardly, since by doubling Cultivate we didn't double our uh, Epiphany there, since we only get to double the first spell we cast. But we did generate more mana that way, which set up our lethal crackle. So probably still missequenced, but it wasn't necessarily all bad. Wildwood Scourge is acceptable, and another Ooze. And we might as well save our mana discount here. But this should be more than enough. So we've got 12, 13 with a discount. So I guess x equals 3. And then we don't want to kill Mentor since that gains life. Not that it really matters. And then we can still double it with our emblem too. I guess we'll kill the mentor, sure. All right. Still at 15 damage coming up, but it wasn't necessary. Sweet, on to the next one. All right, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. Just need land three for cultivate, and then we're off to the races. Plenty of ramp for crackle and ultimatum. Opponent with a ruin crab. The mill matchup's not great. 
And we can't cast turn to prophecy. I guess they're blue green, so maybe a landfall mill deck scavenging ooze. Let's play the triome. It's that way we're guaranteed to cast cultivate at least. Midnight clock gone, that's a nice answer for the mill decks. At least Ooze is not gonna find any creatures in our deck. Alright, so they are a mutate deck as we see Symbiote. Alright, let's cultivate. And do we just get double mountain? Don't really want to cast the 4 mana mastery while the opponent has a rune crab in play. So next turn we might clean up some creatures with fire prophecy. One card left in hand. Who's exiles ultimatum, sure. Alrighty. So we could prophecy, kill the crab, and mastery can go. Do still need triple blue, I suppose, for ultimatum. I'll keep up into the royal. And yeah, that seems good value. We'll let the opponents draw first, and then we'll bounce the ooze, which uh, slows down the opponent's clock a bit too. They can replay the ooze, hit us for three. All right, so still missing the triple blue. I can cast a Kicked into the Royal. And then... What do I bounce? Or do we just take it and then bounce end of turn? Bounce Cobra maybe? Don't really want to put in mutating again. Double visions, exciting. Alright, so if we can survive this turn, we can uh, just win next turn with Crackle. Although I guess our opponent's at 21. And we only have 20 damage. Well, either way we can ultimate him, which is pretty strong. Hoping they don't have a gem racer here that they were holding. The one life gained by Us making a difference here, otherwise we could crankle for 20. So we got an ultimatum and hope to put something useful in play so we can maybe still fire prophecy afterwards if we draw one. Test of Talents, at least the copy still resolves. So that also would have foiled our Crackle. Find another double vision and we found a Prophecy. So we're actually still fine. And then wait until the opponent's turn to kill their creatures. So we can trigger double vision. So double kill Greathorn, kill Cobra. Although then they can maybe mutate and still kill us, so we'll wait for them to move to combat, I think. Great Henge is fine. So I have to target Great Horn twice and Cobra once.
Doesn't really matter here. Can take a bunch of extra turns. With double double vision in play. One replays ooze. And our opponent explodes. Sweet. So yeah, this deck is a ton of fun once it gets to go off. If we get to untamp with double vision, good things happen. And Will and Rowan kind of fill a, a nice role of discounting some of our more expensive spells, although they are a bit awkward with Ultimatum, which doesn't have any generic mana cost. But uh, still nice if we get to take some extra turns while taking them up to then copy more spells afterwards, although can be a bit win more. So definitely not meant as a competitive deck. It will hold its own against creature decks, but against any decks with counter spells, we're going to be in trouble. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.